It ain't about fame. It ain't about fake friends. And screw your ex, it's such a flake. Forget your grades, you need a break. You, it's all about you. Ragazzoni Moto di Ragazzoni Gianfranco. This workshop saved my day. The owner of the workshop knows very well Italian language and only Italian. So using hands, calendar for showing numbers and some popular words we have determined that there are no new breaker pads in the workshop for my 2019 NC Seven 50 XDL. However, Gianfranco was digging into a box full of bracket pads and found some wast pads for an older model. We pulled the bikey onto the service table. Giancarlo dismantled the remaining cladding. He put on the old one and they fitted perfectly. Pads were used about 1.4 or maybe even 1.3. So full of happiness, I paid 20 euro and we drove east along the southern side of the Alps towards Brescia. It was supposed to be Switzerland and the Alps there. Beautiful passes, beautiful views of the mountains and delicious Swiss cheeses. Nothing of that. It was still raining on the northern side of the Alps and the weather radar showed two more days of rain. We reached Trento by highway. In Trento, I visited a friend of mine from Honda service I've met two years ago. I bought a new pads Nissan for just 55 euro. Sick. I knew the service from my experience on Stelvio from two years ago. There's a video about it in the playlist Italy 2021 on my channel. I packed the blocks and we moved on for an overnight stay somewhere in the middle of nowhere to the previously identified bed and breakfast. The next day was even more promising rainy on the border, Italy, Switzerland, and the north parts of the Brenta Dolomites. So anxious about the next day of driving, we arrived for the night. The accommodation turned out to be a great B&B, &B, so we bought some wines, cheese, olives, and local meats in the shop for an evening tasting, and then we parked our mechanical horses near Villa Cercia in Villa Danaunia. We've had our noses glued to weather radars since the morning, and we watched webcams on Stelvio and Gavia. Massacre. Constant rain and clouds everywhere. So we extended our stay with the very nice owner about one day and checked the quality other Italian wines, more cheeses and cold cuts. They turned out to be so delicious that in the afternoon, we had to stock up for the evening. In short words, the day was full of cheese flavors, baguettes, olives, olive oil, local meats, and various fine wines. Today is supposed to be good weather. It's true that there may be clouds. However, it won't rain. We jumped on the skeins and raced towards the Gavia Pass. It leads to the pass from the south beautiful road and great descent to Bormio. Take the exit from Paso di Gavia to Bormio, as this is the most popular one direction of travel, is almost 25 km long and covers 1,396 vertical meters with an average inclination, and in our case, a decrease of 5.6%. So you can feel the climb along the entire section of the route. The highest point of the crossing is located at an altitude of 2618 minor above sea level. The roads from the Gavia Pass have beautiful Italian names, Via Santa Caterina, Via Plagheira, and Strada Provinciale di Gavia. The road is quite ordinary, but who knows where it leads? Gonna be satisfied. Climb to the Gavia Pass, very scenic, without a moment of boredom, gives visitors both a fantastic aesthetic experience, as well as a shot of adrenaline because the road to the pass is narrow, completely unsecured in many places, and quite mobile. It passed us at least 40 cars going to Ponte di Legno. We overtook five or six, and the number of motorcyclists is jaw-dropping. It's immediately clear that you've got it right to motorcycle paradise on Earth.
Ja wracam, a wam tak wszystko jedno. E, lampy jeden kurde. We only spent a few minutes on the Gavia Pass, as the clouds were getting thicker and thicker, and yet this was not the end of our day in the saddle. So we decided not to drink coffee, just go to Bormio, and in case of a bad weather, hang there and wait for better weather. Surprisingly, it didn't rain in Bormio and, most importantly, driveway to Paso de los Stelvio. We started in beautiful sunshine and warmth. The road was dry, so we took off raining clothes. The best is yet to come. The best 25 kilometers of wild serpentines, wonderful views. And at the end, Paso de los Stelvio. You wanna take the pain away, but know that I was born as a fight. We fade, we fade, but we're better than that, we're better than that I know, you know, so why are we holding on, holding on? Here I'm the second time in three last years. So with very good weather conditions, we reached the aforementioned Stelvio Pass. On the pass, you can visit souvenir shops. We drank coffee for four euro a piece, and we took some photos over the pass, then safely run down the Stelvio Pass towards Bolzano, enjoying the view of the valley and on the serpentines on our road.
The plan for today was simple. We are going through the Brunico Pass to Austria, and we settle down at the camp, or if necessary, heavy rain in some quarter, somewhere near Innsbruck. Well, as you know, our plans are not permanent. Zbiera planów. Jedziemy w Dolomit. Zamiast do Austrii. Do Dolomity. During a coffee break, I came up with a new idea. We will go to the next mountains. Where? To the Dolomites. If it's not raining here, maybe it won't rain there either. The guys accepted new plan, and we went. We almost managed to drive dry until the evening. I said almost, because there was no rain until Val Gardena, but a bit further. On the way to Paso Pordoi, we were already driving in wet clouds, where our clothes were covered with moisture. The Dolomites were not visible as well as Paso Pordoi was invisible to us. We admired the views on previous pass, but now we can only curse Paso Pordoi. Just before Cortina d'Ampezzo clouds lift enough to show us fragments of the wonderful mountains, the Dolomites. Slightly disappointed, we arrived at our accommodation in San Vito di Cadore, and we went for pizza and a glass of wine to the pizzeria I recognized a few years earlier during trips on Via Ferrata. I would forget about one more interesting fact. We stopped in Cortina d'Ampezzo next to the former bobsleigh track from the time of the Winter Games in Cortina in 1956. Here we met with boards informing about the reconstruction of the track for the next Olympic Games in 2026. We nodded in admiration at the expenses and the fact that that nothing at all has been built yet until our arrival and the Olympics, just in the minutes. Now promised interesting fact, in September 2023, after our audit, the Italian organizer announced that the bobsleigh track will not be built for the Olympics and the bobsleigh competition will take place in Switzerland or Austria. <laughs> 